to some of these ideas and showing the parallels, all right? Go. Um, let's go. And at any point, I want you also to jump in on any slide of your choice and you know share any in this in uh, um additional information that that need necessary for you to point out no doubt all right so so here we are uh family um <clears throat> today's live stream is entitled abraham the sumerians anunnaki and the ancient new year's festivals in this dialogue, we showed a clear connection. This conversation, we showed a clear connection between Abraham coming up out of the region of, of Sumer, as well as pointing out historically that the region of Sumer is known historically to have been inhabited by Semitic speaking people. Even to the extent that we can say the proto Sumerians are a Semitic stock of people. They're also known as the proto. Uh, Euphradian people. The hmm. proto Euphradian people are a Semitic people. The proto Southern Mesopotamian peoples are a Semitic speaking people. And there's enough historical data that not simply suggests it, but proves it. This means then the cultural ideologies and ideas of spirituality that are coming in Akkadian literature, Sumerian literature, Later on in history, Assyrian liter literature. Later on in history, Babylonian hit literature. All have their foundation in either Sumerian ideas apart from the Semitic people of Sumer, as well as the Semitic people in Sumer. So it's a hodgepodge of indigenous Sumerian tribes that are not of Semitic stock, as well as Semitic speaking people living in Sumer who are classified as being part of the Sumerian, right? No different than us all living here in America and there being so many ethnicities, but we are all classified as Americans if you're born here. But all of us are aware of the cultural and ethnic diversity to understand that there are so many different tribes of people here. We're not all of American origin, but we're all classified as American. So I say in this respect, everyone, I really want everybody to understand this. The term Sumer and Sumerian, when it refers to people, is not a monolithic term. It doesn't describe just one ethnicity of people. There were many ethnic pe peoples living in the region of Sumer and the Semites were the dominant ethnicity in the region. So of course the stories that are told in the Babylonian epics share a commonality with the stories of reading the Torah because it is told predominantly by Semitic speaking tribes, mm. descendants and, <clears throat> and, and ancestors of Father Abraham. Wow. So now let's move. The Babylonian New Year ritual known as Akitu is observed in both Nisanu, which is an Akkadian term, <laughs> and Tashritu. My goodness. So the current Hebrew calendar that we follow mm -hmm. calls the month of Abiv, which is a Hebrew name to describe that the first month on the calendar. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's called in the, the modern Hebrew calendar, Nisan, Nisan. But we know from the Bible it's called Abiv. That mm -hmm. term Nisan is borrowed from a much earlier Semitic term coming mm. out of the region of Sumer, which is Nisanu. Mm. And the term for the current seventh month in the Hebrew calendar, which people say came out of Babylon, but what a lot of people must know is the Babylonians are a newer group in the world. Mm -hmm. The older group in that region is known as the Sumerians. Mm -hmm. And before Babylonians are talking about Tishri, Sumerians are talking about Tashritu. Mm. The term Tashritu literally means beginning. My goodness. The Aramaic term Tishri means not just beginning, but as well as a tone. And there's a cultural conversation for why that is, but I don't have enough time to go there. Mm. <laughs> so the term Nisanu and Tashritu are cognate with the terms Nisan and Tishri. And they're celebrated in both spring and fall. And they contain the following elements, combat, mm. victory, Hmm. creation, divine enthronement, and judgment. Yeah. And the source for that is the cults of Uruk and Babylon, the temple ritual text as evidence for Hellenistic cult practice 
pages 219 through 220, as well as page 228. We really doing this more, more Ray. We don't we don't play with citation of information. We don't been through so many debates that we know if you don't cite the information, <laughs> people gonna be watching talking about oh they made that up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right, right. So I'm gonna keep pushing. Um, before I keep pushing, I want to just point out something that might not be so obvious. Notice that it's noted in this book that the months of Nisanu and Tishri are both spring and fall new year ceremonies. Cool. Why is that remarkably significant? When I tell the masses of Israelites that we had more than one new year that we followed, even in this country, there's more than one new year. Hmm. There's a new year for when a president comes to office. Mm -hmm. That's January 20th. <clears throat> there's the actual new year, January 1st. Mm -hmm. There's the fiscal governmental year, yep. right? right? We already know that there are That's several right. new years in this country. Yep. So it shouldn't be far-fetched to understand when I say our oral tradition tells us that we had four new years. Mm -hmm. There's a new year in Nisan or Abiv because the creator reset the calendar. Nah, he made that up. <laughs> Exodus 12 and 1 says... This month shall be to you the beginning oh. of months. Mm -hmm. He didn't say, listen, Israel, you, 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 you lost a lot of knowledge through your Egyptian captivity. So what you probably didn't know is that this is the first month in the calendar. I didn't read him saying that. Mm -hmm. What I read is the creator dictating through the hand of mm -hmm. Moses that we should understand that from this day forward, this month shall be the beginning of begin. months to you, which yeah. begs the question. If this is now the beginning of months to commemorate the Exodus events, that's a powerful thing. Mm -hmm. But what was the original ordering of the calendar mm -hmm. if because of the Exodus, you're now changing the order? Mm -hmm. Israelites don't think about those questions, but scholars have to. Yes, sir. Right? We have to. Right. So we already know that there's already an implication in Exodus 12 and 1 that there's an older calendar that orders differently. History... The history of the region of Mesopotamia and even the Levant teaches us what the original ordering is as well as the Torah. But I want to really hone in on this before I go back to the PowerPoint. When we tell the masses of Israelites that Rosh Hashanah, the seventh month, is also a new year, no, nah, you made that up. That's Jewish. In fact, the Jewish people got it from the Babylonians, which is where it really came from. And I say, really? Yeah, the Babylonians celebrated a, a New Year's festival in the, in the seventh month around what you call a Rosh Hashanah. That's crazy. So I say, oh, really? So what about the month of Nisan and Abiv? Because we're clearly seeing on the screen right now that Nisan New is also a Babylonian New Year. Mm. So if you're going to tell me that Rosh Hashanah is originally a Babylonian New Year, Whoop -de -whoop, I'm going to take you through history and show you that the Babylonians also celebrated the first of Babiv as a new year. So now what you're going to say? Wow. What you're going to need is an intelligent argument. What you might need to do is, is join Learn Torah Hebrew Academy or, or reach out directly to Moray Mikael Korban Yahoo so you can get some real knowledge because news flash. Yeah. News flash. The Babylonians celebrated two New Year's ceremony, mm -hmm. one in the month of Nisan and the other in the month of Tishri, mm -hmm. just as we do. Mm -hmm. So it's lazy scholarship to say, oh, it's the Babylonians, it's the Babylonians. The time for lazy scholarship is up, Moray. Mm -hmm. And right people up. that have energy like us that don't mind doing the work are showing every day why we need to stop being lazy in this community. That's powerful. So let's keep it pushing. Push it. <clears throat> Depending on the time and place, the Mesopotamian New Year began either in the beginning of autumn, on the first day of the seventh month called Tashritu, which is the origin of the Hebrew month name Tishri, not yet found in the Bible, literally meaning beginning. That's what Tishri means. Mm -hmm. And in the beginning of spring, which is the second New Year festival celebrated by early Mesopotamians, on the first day of the month called Nisanu. Hebrew Nisan, found in the late biblical text of Esther 3 and 7. So once again, Hebrews, 
you got to step your scholarship up. Mm. Rosh Hashanah is not a Babylonian New Year because the Babylonians celebrated it. Yeah, we are aware that the Babylonians at this time, the time we're in right now, observe the New Year. But the greater question that a real scholar asks is, why? That's it right there. Art. From whence did the Babylonians inherit this culture? Because Babylonians are not the oldest people group in this region. That's the it. Sumerians are. And we know that the dominant ethnicity in ancient Sumer was Semitic people. So, mm. of course, they celebrated yeah. a New Year's around this time because those are our earliest ancestors. Right, right. And we again, frame again. It, if I can just, again, frame this around the agricultural element as well. We have to always look at the practical elements of this, right? Because this was things that took place that celebrated the harvest. And I cannot overemphasize this point because this is how our ancestors connected with deity. This is how they connected with, with the spiritual elements and recognizing the holistic aspect of life. So when they're having these festivals, yes, they're in, entirely connecting it to the Most High, but it was also something that was about this harvest that they were bringing in, which has a whole spiritual dynamic to it. So these are things that, that human beings experience the world over, right? So these are lines that we can use to bring people in and to understand this is the meaning of this. So when Shaul is in the era of Pagus and he's encountering all these people worshiping these gods, he had to have a point of reference to connect with the people. Come on. These are points of references to connect with the people to show them the true and, meaning. Of and it. just to show people that it's not just Abraham that was living there. Sometimes when when we're, re we're reimagining the biblical narrative and its stories as Israelites, some people think it was just Abraham that lived in Sumer. Like Abraham and his family always lived in the land of Canaan, but like how people move today, Abraham moved to Miami and lived there for a while. And then he came back to New York or Israel. No, Abraham and his lineage have been living in that region for many, many years. Yeah. The proof in the pudding that it's not just Father Abraham that was there, mm -hmm. the Bible tells us in the book of Joshua, chapter 24, your father served other gods on the other side of the river Euphrates. Oh yeah. What? Oh, yeah. oh yeah. Oh yeah. What? Yeah. But think about in it. No era, way. Just this is last point. In the, in the era of Joshua, right? This is before the Torah is even given to the people in terms of its narrative. The Torah as a legal document is there. <clears throat> but the narrative of the Torah, the stories that surround it ain't even there yet. Mm. And Joshua tells the people through the creator, Joshua was a prophet. Your father served other gods on the other side of the river Euphrates, which means mm -hmm. two things. Mm -hmm. Our ancestors lived on the other side of the river Euphrates, the yeah. region that we're calling Sumer, oh, yeah. the region we're calling Akkad, the region we're calling Mesopotamia, the land between the two rivers, right? right. right. And the second thing is we were deeply immersed in the culture of that region, even to the extent that we followed the idolatrous culture in that region. We yeah. served other gods there. Jump yeah. in, my apologies. I mean, just think about where, where Noah ended up after the deluge, huh? Like he was he was from the east. <laughs> you know what I mean? So where do the people go? They spread out from there. And so we All have right. to really understand that whole dynamic. Like if we're just so isolated on the Levant and don't see that our presence and the knowledge and the consciousness of Yah was far east as well then we're really like just this just deluding ourselves and not understanding how yah has always used people the world over in different areas to bring his culture to the people Fact. and this is what's taking place this is exactly what took place in Sumer as well that's exactly what took place so i'll take it back for the top depending on the time and place the mesopotamian new year began either in the beginning of autumn which is fall on the first day of the seventh month called Tashritu, the origin of the Hebrew name Tishri, not yet found in the Bible, literally meaning beginning, and in the beginning of spring, on the first day of the first month called Nisanu, Hebrew Nisan, found in the late biblical text, Esther 3 and 7, Nehemiah 2 and 1. Originally, Nisan is a Sumerian word meaning first fruit offering. Hmm. What are we bringing on the morrow after the Shabbat? 
of the uh, Feast of Unleavened Bread. Come on, y'all. Yes, sir. Bikarim. Come on. Bikarim. <laughs> Come on. Yes, Thus, sir. even the names of both months exhibit their calendrical roles as beginnings. So let's be clear what we're learning so far. Semites living in the region of southern Mesopotamia celebrated for thousands of years two, at least two new years. The first new year they celebrated was during the, what we call now the seventh month, which is the month of Tishri. It's called in the Hebrew Bible, Etanim. The other new year that they followed was in the month of Nisan, which is called in the Bible, Abiv. Mm -hmm. That's rich. Why does Rosh Hashanah have three names? Meaning the first day of the seventh month is known by three names historically. Let's see why that is. <clears throat> in the book of Ezekiel chapter 40 and one, it reads, in the 25th year of our exile, in our exile, Be Rosh Hashanah, which hmm. translates as in the head or in the beginning of the year, in the 10th day of the month, that was Yom Kippur, hmm. in the 14th year after the city was struck down, on that very day, the hand of the Lord was on me and he brought me there to the temple. What is Ezekiel talking about? Mm. Ezekiel has a vision of the presence of the creator manifesting itself before him during the season and time of Yom Kippur, which was actually during what's called a Yovel or Jubilee year. Mm. It was a Jubilee year that year. You guys will see that in a couple of moments. And, and I'm, I'm hoping that all of us as Bible readers know that all jubilees are proclaimed during the seventh month, yes, particularly indeed. around the in-gathering feast, which is Sukkot. Sukkot. All right? <laughs> so this was a jubilee year. And look at how Ezekiel describes this season. Rosh Hashanah. Hashanah. Come on, I'm going to show that to you guys in the Hebrew in a couple of moments. According to rabbinical tradition, there are in fact four new years, each serving a unique purpose. Just like our ancestors in the Southern Mesopotamia, the first of Tishri is a new year. Two Be Shavat is a new year for trees, which is the 15th of the month of Shavat. Oh. Our ecclesi ecclesiastical new year, a new year for redemption, a new year for when kings come to throne, Mm. is on the first of Nisan or in the first of the Hebrew month of Abiv. Then there's a new year for temple tithing. Mm. Temple tithing, all tithes that are brought to the temple. Fiscal year. The mm. way that that is annexed and collected doesn't happen at the same time of new year as the other new years in the Bible. It has its own new year. So the new year for the tithing of cattle begins in the first of Elul. So what we know historically and through wow. our tradition that we always, as a people group, the Israelites had four New Year's. That's profound. Now let's get more heavy. This is our Hebrew calendar, right? Our modern current calendar. We see the month of Nisan, which is here the first month. In Nisan, we have the Passover, the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Again, first fruits. The same first fruits that was even celebrated in Babylon. So what Israelites going to say now? <laughs> when I, when we just read that the Babylonians had a first fruit cer cele uh, ceremony during the month of Nisan. What y'all going to say now? That's that's Babylonian origin too? Mm. You better know that it was the culture of your ancestors and your ancestors were in Babylon. Mm. Hello. Yes. Tishri oh. is, is regarded as the seventh month, right? Mm -hmm. But let's think about something. We just spoke about earlier that the creator says in Exodus 12 and 1 that the month of Abib shall be the beginning of months to us, which is the month of Nisan. So if from that time onward, Nisan or Abib would be the beginning of months, that begs a question, Moray. Mm -hmm. What was the original ordering of the Hebrew calendar if the creator clearly changed it during the Exodus? Let's take a look at that. Now the Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall be the beginning of months for you. It is to be 
the first month of the year. And I always pay attention to words. <laughs> he says to you. Mm, to you. That's like me telling my kids, you can't have this and you can't have this. This is forbidden to you. You see that bottle of King mm. David wine imported from Israel? <laughs> you, you, and you can't have that. Right. I never said I can't. Right. So think about it. The creator emphasizes in the biblical text that I believe is the first month to us. It's a designation. Think about that, Moray. Mm -hmm. If he says it's the first month to us, he's also saying something. Right. It can't just be the first month, period. Right. He says it's going to be the first you. month to you. <laughs> right. So my question is, what is it to him? What is y'all's first month? Exactly. What is it in relation to creation and the original mm -hmm. calendar? There you go. Remember, he changes it because of the Exodus event. And let's not marginalize it. This was a beautiful and powerful thing. Yeah. But there's still an implication here that there was an older calendar. Mm -hmm. Where else in the Bible do we see that there was an older calendar? Let's move. In the story of Noah, Genesis chapter 7 and 11, it says, in the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, on the 17th day of the month, mm. on that day, all the fountains of the great deep burst forth mm. and the windows of the heavens were open. According to Genesis 7 and 11, Noah's flood began in the second month on the 17th day. Let me tell you something, Moray. My birthday is the 17th of Keshvan. Hmm. Keshvan as a word denotes the biblical flood. Hmm. Keshvan is the current eighth month on the Hebrew calendar. Okay. And if anybody was to look it up right now, you'd see for yourself, just like we fact checked information earlier, I need everybody to look at this. Wow. Noah's flood occurred on the wow. 17th of Keshvan. Mm. Pronounced in Hebrew, Keshwan, but mm -hmm. you're going to need to type it with a V, Keshvan. Mm -hmm. On the 17th day of Keshvan, which is my mm -hmm. Hebrew birthday, mm -hmm. that's the day that Noah's flood started. My goodness. What's interesting about that? Let's go back to the problem. <laughs> we see looking at the calendar that the flood of Noah took place in Keshvan. Mm. But Moray, on our current calendar, Keshvan is the eighth month. It's the eighth month, right? But in the, the book of Genesis, it month. calls it the second month. My goodness. So, that so if you what know. we now call the eighth month mm. was originally the second month, I have a question, Moray. What's then the first what month? Would the original <laughs> first month have been? Today. There you go. Today. Yes, sir. That makes sense. I, I heard somewhere, study and show yourself approved. My goodness. The creator clearly said that he changed and reset the calendar. This shall be the beginning of months to you. We know Noah's flood happened mm -hmm. in the month of Keshvan. That's powerful. But the problem is Keshvan is the eighth month. Mm. But time out. Keshvan is only the eighth month because of the calendar reset in reset. Exodus 12 and 1, yeah. which means Tishri was originally the first. <laughs> and if Tishri was originally the first, that's why we also call it Rosh Hashanah. Uh, nah. And sense. even the name tells you it's the first because as you saw earlier, Tishri literally means beginning. beginning. Mm -mm -mm. Come on. That's rich. Are we not done, Moray? <laughs> That's real. It's more. Let me let me pause for a moment and make sure the community is is understanding what's happening. <laughs> they here. They awful quiet right now. Because <laughs> <laughs> when you see a chat this quiet, that's because you got people doing this. <laughs> hey, that's like rich. That's rich. Yeah, man. It's it's always a beautiful moment when you can say something that yields a thought-provoking moment, where you literally are leaving people speechless. Because the proof is always in the pudding. And I'm going to say it right now, and it's bold to say, you can't disprove what I just showed. No. no you can't. No. The floor is yours. <sighs> but I know you can't disprove what I just showed. 
Right. History bears witness to what I just said. The Torah <laughs> bears witness to what I just said. Let's go right back to that beautiful being footage because there's more to unpack and explore. We are in teaching mode. Here we go. Let's, Let's so take it a step sense. further now because I, I believe in, in exhausting information. Like, for instance, I hate to say this, that, that Diddler trial that's about to happen <laughs> yeah. where 100 girls are coming out today and 400 tomorrow and this new case, there's, a, there's something in, in legalese called a preponderance of evidence. Mm -mm -mm. They're going to throw so much Damn. stuff on his case <laughs> to where it's almost impossible for him to deny the truth of their claim. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to tell y'all, I went to a law school, John Jay College, mm -hmm. and the way we were trained to look at evidence and compile evidence is in the frame of legalese, a preponderance of evidence. So that wasn't a one and done for a lot of people. What I just showed is sufficient to end the conversation, mm -hmm. but coming from a legal background, it doesn't stop there. <laughs> We're going to get more. deeper. There's more. <laughs> <laughs> There's more. There we go. Mm -mm. Mar Keshvan. The word Mar means bitter in Hebrew. Mm. Comes from the Akkadian word Wara Samnu, literally eighth month. Mm. Sometimes shortened or abbreviated to Keshvan. So even our ancestors are referring to this as the eighth month, mm. right? The standard Tiberian pronunciation, Keshwan, is the second month of the civil year, which starts mm. on the first of Tishri. What mm. did they just say? Mm. Keshvan, right. as a civil year for the early Mesopotamians, was That's considered the second month on their calendar. My goodness. Even they knew it was the second month. Just like clearly Noah knew and Moses knew it was originally the second month. Let's move. And the eighth month on the ecclesiastical calendar, which starts on Nisan. Let's move. Now, I wanted to examine in context that Ezekiel mentioned. In Ezekiel chapter 40 and 1, it says, in the five and twentieth year of our of our galut, which is the Hebrew word for exile, in Rosh Hashanah, hmm. which is the Yovel of the Jubilee. Mm -hmm. Anybody curious about what <clears throat> translation I'm going by? This is the Orthodox Jewish Bible translation, OJB. I like it. This is a this is a strict literal Hebrew translation. So. Ezekiel refers to this period as Rosh Hashanah. They add in the brackets because of the time period in the history that this was during a Hebrew Jubilee. Mm -hmm. So we should definitely know, because Israelites argue me, they say, all right, I do see in the Hebrew Ark that Ezekiel calls this Rosh Hashanah, mm -hmm. which means beginning of the year, but how we know that he ain't talking about Abib? Because that's mm -hmm. the new year. So as far as I'm concerned, Rosh Hashanah is our beef. And he was talking about our beef. No, he wasn't. No. Because this was during a Jubilee year. And the Jubilee right. is not proclaimed during our beef, it's proclaimed during the seventh month. Yeah. Yeah. This is Yom Kippur all day. <laughs> and as we say in Learn Torah Hebrew Academy, Moray, the work is easy when you're well studied. Yes, sir. In the 10th day of the month, in the 14th year, Ezekiel provides us, Moray, with so much information. We know the year. Yeah. It was 573 BCE. My goodness. I'm going to get a little deeper in the year in a couple of moments, by the way. I came with some work today. Let's go. In the 14th year, which was 573 BCE, after the fall, in the selfsame day, the hand of the Lord was upon me and brought me there in the night vision. Mm. Let's move on. Now, this is my commentary and my handwriting. Now, let me shift gears and put on my historian hat. Ezekiel provides us with three points of reference to verify whether or not the new year he's talking about is either in Tishri mm -hmm. or Aviv. For he provides the time period, the post-exilic year. He says it was the 25th year of our exile 
Well, we know when the exile started. Mm -hmm. He then provides the day of the month. He said it was the 10th day. He finally provides the advent or beginning of the exile. He said it was the 14th year after the city was conquered. Now that we have those historical dates, which Ezekiel provided in this passage, we can now verify it with the ancient calendar to see if the vision he was talking about took place as Rosh Hashanah in Tishri or Aviv. Mm -hmm. It comes out that the calendar date, based on the accurate historical information Ezekiel pointed out for us, verifies that this did indeed take place during the yeah, month of Tishri, time. September, on the yep. 10th day of Tishri, which was the 12th yep. of September that year. Mm. In the Hebrew calendar year, 3189, and mm. in the Gregorian calendar year, 573 BCE. Wow. wow. That's work. That's work. <clears throat> we we that's came with work today? That's work. That's Come work. On. We're gonna get that work. <laughs> Come on. As yeah. as our, as as East Gate says in the chat, high level of instruction. Yeah. Come this on, y'all. This is critical. This is critical. Come Orientation on. is everything, and we have to reorient ourselves correctly as relates to time. So Come this on. is so essential. Lot. If we're not on y'all's time, we ain't, and we, we on ain't. Gregory's time, we out. You know what I'm saying? We out. We got to get this back. We out. But um. Usually I don't do this, but but go ahead. There's some more. <laughs> There's <laughs> more. <laughs> this is rich. And this is what I like to call the icing on the cake. In the book of Exodus, chapter 34, 22, 22, it says, You shall observe the feast of weeks, of the first fruits of the wheat harvest, and the feast of ingathering at the year's end. Mm. Mm. Um Israelites, mm. I'm not mm. sure if you know this, but mm -hmm. the Feast of Ingathering is Sukkot. Right. And look at what it calls Sukkot. It says in the English translation that the Feast of Ingathering is at the year's end. But Moray, we read Hebrew. Right. I see Hashana, that's year. Right. But Tekufat don't mean uh, year's mean, end. Mean. Tekufat. tekufat means turning or circle this literally says at the turn of the year mm. Mm. december 31st into january 1st mm. marks the turning or change mm. from the old to the new year mm -hmm. was that moses just literally telling us that the seventh month marks with the, the seasons mm. the turning of the new year yes. from the old to the new Nah, Zion, you reaching. <laughs> you reaching. All right, yeah. Tikufa does also mean to turn. That's a fact, Zion. And Shana means year. So this does say at the year's turning. Mm. But how do we know that the feast and gathering is Suko? I, I still think this is Abiv. Wow. Israelites always want a dead idea to live. Mm -mm. So let me prove through the Torah that the Feast of Ingathering, which the Torah tells us marks the turn of the year, is yeah. in Sukkot. Easy yeah. work, Moray. Look at it. Easy that. work. That's easy right there. In Leviticus 23, it says, verse 39, also in the 15th day of the seventh month, when you have gathered in the fruit of the land. In gathering. What is the ingathering? <laughs> when you have gathered in the fruit of the land. Yeah. When is the ingathering feast? That seventh month, huh? mm -hmm. you shall keep a feast to the Lord on the first day shall be a Sabbath on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath and you shall take on the first day the bowls of goodly trees sounding like Sukkot to anybody mm -hmm. branches of palm trees and the bowls of thick trees and willows of the brook and you shall rejoice before the Lord your God for seven days mm -hmm. does it sound like Sukkot to anybody fast forward to verse 42 and you shall dwell in booths we know we are talking about Sukkot clear clear <laughs> Ezekiel, excuse me, Moses just called the season of the seventh month that marks Sukkot. He says it's the turn of the year. I don't know what else y'all need to hear to understand that this is a new year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But Moray, I brought some, I brought some more stuff. <laughs> Strapped. The word for for in the beginning, the first word of the Bible is bereshit, sheet, right? Mm -hmm. Our ancestors teach that the first month on the Hebrew calendar is Tishri, 
because Tishri was the date in which the world was created, the beginning of it all. Yeah. Well, Moray, if you rearrange the letters in the word Bereshit, it Tishri. literally spells Aleph Be Tishri, Tishri, the first of Tishri. Mm. Mm. Same six letters, Beit, mm -hmm. Resh, Aleph, Shin, Yod, Tav, Aleph, Beit, Tav, Shin, Resh, Yod. That's the code. On that note, encoded. It's I encoded. Got I ain't got nothing else to say, bro. It's encoded. And, and 